Throwing cows from helicopters, setting Guinness World Records, marriage proposals to customers, and police calls to turn off the bubble machines. This is just some of the remarkable marketing that today's guest undertakes. Oh, by the way, the cows were stuffed. Yeah, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. A successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, you, so much more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing. That's exactly what we do around here. If you are new to the show, welcome. You are about to grow your little business into the empire it deserves to be, if you action some of the ideas you hear. If you are not new to the show, if you are a long-time listener, love your work. Thank you so, so much. You mean the world to me. I digress. Hey, uh, today's show is lovingly brought to you by the good folk, the good folk at Net Registry, who get your online marketing sorted. Check out their exclusive listener packages, and there's a couple of ripper new ones, including a do it yourself. No, not a do it yourself, a do it for me. Hey, website kind of package. Head over to netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. And 99 Designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace, where you will get a design you love guaranteed in seven days. Got to love that. And you get a free upgrade, $99 free upgrade, actually. Uh, Head over to 99design.com forward slash Timbo. Hey, big show today. I have a chat with Arthur Greeno. He's a little bit crazy. I love a crazy marketer. He's also the lead franchisee with Chick-fil-A, which is based in Tulsa over in the States there. Uh, he's a Guinness Book of World Record holder, and he's a passionate, he's so passionate about creating remarkable marketing. And then we spend a lot of time talking about that. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I also help a broke listener find some money for a product idea she has. And I've got a motivational quote that'll get you through the tough times when plan A doesn't quite work. Plenty of marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Join the Small Business Big Marketing community and have your marketing questions answered by other motivated business owners, including Timbo, over at crankmymarketing.com. Right, Dio, we will start with this listener question from Lynette Saunders. She says, hello, Tim. Hello, Lynette. Very formal. I have designed a product that I would like to market. My problem is that I simply don't have any money to market it. I wonder whether she's actually produced the product or just designed it. Either or, these ideas will work. I've tried looking for government grants, but unfortunately the ones that have been sent to me are for companies who can match the government with 50% of the cost. The point is, I don't have any percent to match anyone with. Right, that would be zero, Lynette. I have found one business here in Queensland that is prepared to build the product for me, but he too needs the money up front. I was wondering if you had any suggestions for me. Thank you for your time, Lynette. Thank you, Lynette, for your email. Three things I would do, Lynette. Number one, find people to believe in your dream. It's a bit of a numbers game, but if you speak with enough, you'll find them, especially if it solves a problem that they have, if your product solves a problem that they have. I just watched a video sent to me by a listener, actually, about a boat that was built in the Maldives called Ocean Divine. And this guy, French guy, lunched, breakfasted, had coffee with 200 people, of which six gave him enough money to build the boat of his dreams to start a diving business. I've actually reached out to him for an interview. Hopefully he says yes. His wife said yes. She just said she's got to speak to him. Uh, Number two, another idea to find some money for you, Lynette, build some excitement and credibility around your idea by getting interviews in key 
industry media and maybe build a website around that where you put that media that you get and make this idea tangible. So it goes from being an intangible thought to at least a website where you can talk about it, share some media coverage you've got and add some credibility to it. I know you'll be worried about giving away the idea, but that will be your call. Idea number three, crowdfunding. Websites like Indiegogo, Possible, and Kickstarter. And if you're wanting to know a bit more about that, I've interviewed a couple of crowd funders of recent times. Episode 220, uh, Bart from Innies was a crowd funder. And episode 218, Simon from <laughs> The Toilet Paper, Who Gives a Crap? <laughs> Gotta love that. I'll put links in the show notes to it. The bottom line, Lynette, don't give up on your dream. If you truly believe in it, there is, not will be, there is a way. Support for this show comes from NetRegistry, a one-stop shop for getting your online marketing sorted. Verity Ma, their chief marketing officer, recently told me this story of a very happy mechanic. So one of my favourite stories of customers that I heard was a salesperson was talking to a mechanic and he was talking about what sort of email he would like to have and what kind of hosting, whether he wants cloud or cPanel hosting. And the mechanic just said, look, I don't care, build my website, here's my phone number, make my phone ring and send me the bill. And that was the last we heard of him. He didn't provide us content. He didn't provide us any details about his business. We had his contact details. We wrote all the content and we just got his phone ringing and sent him the bill. Net Registry, where happy mechanics go to grow their business online. Visit netregistry.com.au or give them a buzz on 1300 638 734. And tell them Timbo sent you. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Support for this show comes from 99designs, where dozens of designers compete to deliver a fast, affordable design you'll love. Speaking of love, their big cheese, Patrick Llewellyn, recently compared 99designs to a dating site. We really think of contests almost like the dating paradigm. You go to a nightclub, it's noisy, there's a lot of people to meet, you get to meet a lot of people, and if you're lucky, you know, at the end of that process, you might meet someone, right? And then you go on and and, and have dates. And so a contest is kind of like that paradigm. You put up your proposal, lots of designers submit their ideas, and then you start to whittle down to a few of the ones that really resonate with you. And then ultimately, you pick one of them. And once you pick that one designer, the chances of you going on to work with that designer to get other things designed is actually very high. 99 Designs, where love is in the air. For a free $99 upgrade on your first design, visit 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. Righto, let's get stuck into today's guest. It is Arthur Greeno. And you can hit him up on Twitter. You know, I love it when you hit my guests up on Twitter, at Arthur Greeno. That's green with an O. Now, he is the holder of two Guinness World Records. He's the father of six, but most importantly, he is a franchisee with Chick-fil-A, which is a fast food chain in the States. And he's an authority on remarkable marketing. And he's a bit of a practical joker. He's not scared to have a crack when it comes to creating marketing that people are going to talk about and help build his business, not only with his clients and customers, but with his staff as well. Got to love that. We cover why 99.99% of business owners avoid this type of marketing and how to overcome that. We talk about crazy, crazy stuff that is going to get your business noticed. You're going to love this interview. I started off by asking Arthur, what is his weirdest or quirkiest habit. Oh, and I've got to say, it's disgusting. My weirdest or quirkiest habit. Okay, um, I love a snack food. Um, when I grew, I grew up in Hawaii, and so it's called yiklung, and it's basically like dried prunes that they put a weird, uh, a weird licorice powder kind of stuff on <laughs> a, a mixture of salt. And so I'll I'll literally order it from Hawaii yeah. and bring it into Oklahoma, and I'll always try to make my friends try it, and and they tell me it looks like dog food and it tastes worse. Arthur, you've just let me get clear: uh, dried prunes with a licorice powder and salt. 
Yeah, it's um, it, it's called Leaky Mui. I think you'd be a Leaky Mui after it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just me saying it, my mouth my mouth is watering. So, um, uh, I so love it. it's it's just you know it's one of those things. I grew up as a kid there and 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 eating it, and so um, every once in a while, my sister will get it for me for my birthday or something, and and I'll just try to get all my employees and, and I'll make them eat it and kind of videotape their faces as they're. Um, as they're like, oh, this is horrible. Now, listen, you you own you're a franchisee with Chick Fil A. From what I can tell, you're also uh, head officer's worst nightmare. So maybe, <laughs> maybe you you could introduce that onto the menu only of your franchise stores. You know what? That is something. I know that True Kathy once uh, was trying to make chicken feet at the home office and. Um, and, of course, I asked my friend who was there, I said, did you eat them? And he said, no, I didn't eat them. Why would I do that? And I said, well, I would have eaten them. So, <laughs> Tell me about being head officer's worst nightmare. Is it something you enjoy? Do you set out to do? Or are they just incredibly conservative? Um, I think some of it is Chick-fil-A is incredibly conservative, and I just make them nervous. Um, I, you know, one time uh, one of my accountants at the home office said, you know, uh, there's an ongoing joke with all the uh, the accountants at the home office, and that's that we either made a rule about Arthur Greeno or we're about to make a rule about <laughs> Arthur Greeno. And so um, the, the way I look at it is I obey the rules. I may just find loopholes in it or, um, you know, it may not be exactly the way they meant it, and they weren't clear. So I look at that as – you know, as a possibility. As a red rag to a bull. You know, one of the things I've spoken to, you will be the 270th uh, successful small business owner that I've spoken to on this show. And I must say, one thing that links all of you is your willingness, not even your willingness, like you, you must challenge convention. Is that kind of how you feel about your marketing? Yeah, but the funny thing is that I don't sit around and think, how can I do something that uh, that's going to make someone irritated with me. I look at it from the standpoint of what would make me stop. You know, a good marketing plan is one that makes people kind of stop in their tracks and look at your business and spend time thinking about it. So, so at my restaurant, the thing I tell people is my job is to make sure that uh, if they're not going to eat with me, it's because they choose not to eat with me, not because they forgot to eat with me. Tell me about more more about making me stop. So as a consumer, you're, you, as the business owner, you're sitting there thinking, how can I get consumers to stop and think about my business? Yeah, um, I mean, that, that's what I do. And, and so, you know, I'll start out, the, out by the road and say, how do I get people to be thinking about Chick-fil-A? How do I make sure they're not forgetting about Chick-fil-A as they drive by? And that could look... A number of different ways. I, I call it visual noise. You know, what kind of visual noise do I have in my restaurant as somebody's driving by? Do I have a, a live cow mascot dancing out in front of the um, up by the road, or do I have um, a giant inflatable um, uh, cow out there? Or one time, and, and you have to wait till the the wind is blowing the right way. I actually put a couple of bubble machines on the top of uh, my restaurant, and it was blowing all the bubbles into the road to where. Um, I, you know, the police had asked me to stop because I was causing, um, causing distractions. Love it. Uh, it. Tell me that cow, I've seen the inflatable cow or the stuffed cow that you use. Um, who came up with the line that it holds eat more chicken? That was actually a marketing department called the oh, Richards group, um, out of Dallas it. that, that they came up with. And what's funny is that they were developing a line of, uh, a billboards for Chick-fil-A and that wasn't even on the, on the block. It was, that was kind of a, uh, just something that somebody else was thinking of, yeah. and they were kind of talking about it, and they said, well, what is this? And he said, oh, it's just something I was toying with. And he said, now that's funny. <laughs> it is. Every time I see it, it puts a smile on my dial. I'll put a, I'll put a photo of it in the show notes, listeners. Tell me, um, I, I'm, I, I am going to digress, but I have to ask, uh, do you love chicken salt, Arthur? Do I love chicken? Yeah. Um, I do. Um, I'm, um, I do like chicken. Um, no, no, honest- no, not chicken. Uh, this, ch- this is much more important. Chicken salt. Oh, chicken. I don't know what a chicken salt is. Oh, my goodness. Arthur, I will get your postal address after this is over and send you uh, God's gift to the culinary race. 
It is extraordinary. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Chicken t- salt. Chicken salt. Uh, you, this is going to change Chick Fil A. In fact, can I have some kind of like, I don't know. I need now. I need a penny for every grain that chicken <laughs> Chick Fil A sell. I explained. To, I say it's salt that tastes like chicken, and I explained to my kids that you know how chicken skin has all the dimples on it. There's one yeah. grain of chicken salt in each of the dimples. That's my kind of my my story anyway. Okay, y- you'll love it. Tell me, uh, oh, making noise, making people stop. So you do it from the outside. What I mean, yep. once people are inside, I mean, you've got their attention. What about beyond the street? What do you do? Not what head office does, but what do you do as a franchisee to get people to stop and think about your business? Well, you t- you're talking about from outside the road or once Well beyond inside? it. Well beyond it. They're miles away. It's not even time to eat. You want people Uh-oh. thinking about Chick-fil-A. Yeah, you know the big thing that I look for is when we're when I'm doing marketing is how do we make what somebody would think of a normal situation where I can blow it up and make it fun. Uh, for example, we had a we were catering an event uh, to a church and they they brought in Chick Fil A and they had boxes of Chick Fil A and uh, and they're they're out there eating picnics and that's all well and fine until the helicopter came in and started dropping cow cows that were parachuting. <laughs> And so, yeah. and now that they were stuffed cows. Okay. Just so we're clear, we didn't yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. throw live cows out. No. Um, but if anyone was going to do it, it'd probably be me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But- well, you can only get so many, in a, in a, so many live cows in a helicopter. So that, that must, that, I mean, that's significant. That's not a cheap exercise. Um, wh- why did you choose to do something so crazy that would have cost a lot of dough for that particular event? Well, wh- when I did that one, it was more about, um, you know, I knew that we had these little parachutes. Uh, and I said, well, how do I make this fun? I mean, yeah, we can throw it off a roof. And I said, oh, let's make it really fun. And I was like, well, how do we get higher than that? And I said, well, what about a helicopter? And then I just started asking the questions. And, and, and I teach a lot of my team members this a lot of times is that, you know, sometimes when we're trying to achieve our dreams, we got to start walking towards it and it'll come into focus. And so I started asking around. You know, can we drop this out of a helicopter? What are the rules for the helicopter? What are they allowed to do? And and they were all for it. And they said, we'd love to do that. That sounds like a lot of fun. So so they um, I gave them, you know, literally about 400 cows <laughs> and they dropped them out of the parachute and it, it I'm sorry, out of the helicopter. Yeah. And, it, and it was fun. It was, it was a blast. And, and then adults and kids were going crazy and <laughs> I'm running around after these, and they're running into each other. And I'm um, I'm guessing there's some Chick Fil A branding on the cow. Yeah, it has okay. a Chick Fil A eat more chicken, and then it has a a red parachute for the for the um, the cow, and um, and it says Chick Fil A in it. And and so it's it's just a fun event, and it's it's when we do remarketing uh, when we do marketing at Chick Fil A, some of the things we like to refer to is is it remarkable? Is it something that somebody's going to remark about? And if it's not something they're going to remark about, why bother doing it? There's plenty of ads out there that have the same old, you know, humdrum, boring, you know, but we want to make it where people are walking away going, oh, my gosh, I was at that event that one time and they had a parachuting cow. It was so awesome. Uh, can we go deeper on that? Because I, I so believe in what you're saying. I'm as guilty as an, the next business owner for not necessarily always doing remarkable marketing. What? Why? Why do – I'm going to put a percentage on it. I reckon it would be 99.95% of businesses don't do remarkable marketing. What, what, what's your number and why? Uh, mine is probably uh, mine's probably 99.99 that, that we do it. I mean, it's just – Recurring. Um, it, it, it's, for us, it's one of those that – it's the cheapest kind of marketing. When you can do marketing mm. and people go around and talk about it, um, for example, e- even for myself, when I do uh, – things for my employees for their for their birthdays i'm not just going to give them a card in the mail i'm going to show up at their school with a bunch of cow spotted um, balloons and um and a cookie uh and drop it off at their school why because the normal boss wouldn't do that you could weird the kid out arthur you could weird them out well and and i probably do (laughs) yeah i probably do i'm that creeper boss no i'm just kidding yeah 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 those employees um, when you do that for them, they're going to be walking around talking about how awesome my boss was. It's kind of like as a kid, you never want to be embarrassed by your parents, but inside you do. I mean, you want to be embarrassed where they're going, oh, yeah. my mom and dad were always there for me. 
I know. I keep telling dad jokes just because I know my kids secretly love them and my audience does too. So if you've got any dad jokes, feel free to drop them uh, during our time together. Hey, what did you do for the fellow who openly said in one of your restaurants he wants to marry Chick-fil-A? Oh, uh, so his name was Jared. He said um, he said if Chick Fil A would propose, I would marry him, um, <laughs> marry it. And so um, we we heard that his birthday was coming up. So we're always looking for opportunities to make things remarkable. So we called his place of business, which was a, a jewelry store, and said, "Can we come up there and and provide um, provide all the food for a party for him and just have a big birthday party for him?" And so we did, and we brought the cow out there, um, and um, and we had the cow have a sign because the cows can't talk, and the cow had a sign that said, uh, "Will you marry me?" And 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 he said yes, and and what I tell people is that um, uh, he he got married a few weeks later to someone else, and so it, the cows were so distraught about that that now they can't spell right. <laughs> Love it. Uh, you're silly. You are silly. So, but. <laughs> but when, when we're doing stuff like that, a lot of times we forget how small gestures like that, it may seem like a big thing. And so let's take the cow out of the equation. The fact that we showed up at his um, mm-hmm. his place of employment with his favorite food, um, all of his employ, all the people that work with him are talking about it. He's talking about it. And it was a slow news day because we had about four different news sites that came out that day. Uh, and um, But everyone that, that knew about it, was remarking about it. And so when we look at marketing, I did my job and it was a whole lot less than if I was to have to get, you know, go spend money on a TV ad or mm. a radio ad. Yes. Yeah, how boring. How bo- and keep finding the money too and That's not getting right. and not getting people talking. Tell me um the the well I actually want to go back to the question. I know you've done some other remarkable marketing, so we will touch on that. But why? Why ninety nine point nine nine percent of businesses don't go down this path? Is it lack of courage? Is it lack of imagination? Creativity? Uh, they think they're going to get laughed at. What is it? Uh, well, I think it's all the above. I think that people tend to do what's easy, and what's easy is the humdrum, boring marketing where you don't have to get out of your chair to figure something out. You can just, you know, by click of a button, you can um, shoot off a, an, a, an email about what you want and somebody else can create it and email it out. It's lazy, come... isn't it? It's lazy. It is. It's absolutely lazy. Mm. And so, um, uh, you know, I tell people all the time that, you know, if you're going to do something remarkable, it, it doesn't necessarily take a lot of money, but it does take a little bit of brain power. Yes, Correct. Correct. Um, and, so. and and creativity, you know, like I, I grew up in an advertising agency, spent 10 years in a, in a large advertising agency. I was in management. I wanted to be in the creative department, but I didn't feel creative. And even the fact that there was a, a, a department called creative kind of mm-hmm. drew, drew a line in the sand. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there who go, I'm not creative, whereas we are. By, by nature, we are. Well, I think we compare ourselves to other people like – um, you know, I, it's one of those that who who are we creative compared to? I mean, are we, are we mm. saying we're not creative compared to um, the Steve advertising Jobs. firm, you mm-hmm. know, or Steve Jobs, or, you know, whatever it may be? Mm. We all are. Creativity is just doing things different. So it's about looking at ways of doing things different. I want to touch on the Guinness Book of Records that you've got in a minute, but tell me about two questions about doing things that are remarkable. Is it something that you spend? Uh, an hour a day on, an hour a month, and what does the process look like? How can we, other small business owners, learn how to be remarkable? To me, doing remarkable things, it's kind of like um, like exercising. The more you do it, the more it comes easily. So, um, so as you're doing different things, like for me, it's standard for me that after I go meet with somebody, like if I if I want to go learn from a millionaire, I'll go ask them to lunch. Well, after we have lunch, I immediately um, will contact my um, my assistant, and she'll send them a box in the mail that has a um, it's a Chick Fil A cow spotted box with a cow in it, and my book in it, and and some like I have a pen, believe it or not, sitting in front of me that says there's a ten percent chance this pen was up someone's nose. Um, <laughs> And just a bunch of fun stuff that we'll put in there. Um, why? Because I want to be remarkable. But that's just how I do it. Mm-hmm. And so 
now it's just it's second nature. You said, in fact, you're sitting in a playground right now in a new Chick Fil A store. You're training <laughs> the staff. Um, how do you pass your way of thinking on to others in your group? Well, a lot of times, what what I tell them is, I, I encourage people to write down when they when they see things that they think is remarkable. A lot of the ideas I have, I stole from somebody else. I'll tell you right now, I'm a, I'm a big thief. <laughs> well, as I always say, there's no such thing as an original... Uh, what do they say? A, a, a good idea has a thousand fathers and a bad idea is an orphan. Yeah, that's, there yes, you go. I, I agree with you on that. And, yeah. and so to me, it's, it's, it's when I see another company do something, I will write it down. And I'll stop and I'll write it down or do whatever it takes for you to remember that so that when the opportunity presents itself later, you can fall back on that. For example, deliver, delivering someone a pizza is, a, is just a normal thing. But if, if you're delivering someone a pizza and you, made, you, you called the pizza company and said, can you make a smiley face on the pizza with pepperonis? Mm-hmm. As easy as it sounds, that person will probably remark about it because other people don't do that. Mm. Mm, so simple. It is. It can be. Tell me about these Guinness Book of Records that you seem to uh, hold. So uh, the first one was the the well, it's, it started with a, a giant milkshake, and we we're going to do a giant milkshake as a promotion for Chick Fil A, and uh, and that one got picked up in the uh, the Ripley's Believe It or Not book for the world's largest hand spun milkshake, <laughs> and um, and I didn't know all the rules of the game for the Guinness World Records, and that was a um, that was a six foot tall hand spun milkshake, and um, and we we did that as a community event to give away our new chocolate milkshakes to the community, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was a it was a chore, um, but we were able to figure it out. But it it kind of all started because my kids kept saying, uh, "Dad, you ought to set a Guinness World Record," and they would show me these pictures of these guys that had like. Uh, fingernails that were four feet long, oh, or yeah. tattoos all over their bodies. Yeah, and I'm thinking there's no way I'm going to do that. So, uh, so I said, well, what are my strengths? You know, what am I good at? What do I do? And I said, well, I do. You know, I, I operate in the food business. So how do I? How you know maybe I can do something with food? And so we started really thinking about what that is, and um, and so that's kind of what we came up with it with a. Um, with a milkshake, and the milkshake was six feet tall, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that's okay. Let's make something huge." And so we said, "Let's do lemons and a uh, lemonade." And so then we created a 840 gallon lemonade, which which broke the record for the world's largest soft drink at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, then some providence in China. I don't know if China's listening right now, but um, you know they broke it with some weird blueberry drink. Ah, oh, wouldn't you I know? know. How dare they? So then we said, let's go ahead and set another one, which was 1,140 gallons, and that was the world's largest sweet tea, which unfortunately I just found out it just got broken. Of course, my wife rolled her eyes and said, well, what are you going to do next? And I said, well, I'm going to do something next, but uh, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll let them savor it for a little while, so I don't yeah. know what I'll do next. But, I'll, you know, um, I, I get too bored too fast um, to let it sit around for too long, but – What's amazing about this is every one of those world records we did, every item that we had was donated. Mm. Everybody wants to be part of something amazing and remarkable. Yes. And so when you're doing something like this, when you go talk to those those people, the powers that be, they start um, – they get energized by it. And so when I did the milkshake thing, uh, I went to the people that created our milkshakes and said, hey, can you provide all the milkshake base and the ice cream for me? And they were thrilled to do it. They just – they're like, this is awesome. We love this. That's interesting. That's a really interesting point. Big learning there because I think one of the limiting beliefs around being remarkable is, oh, these big events, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money. Mate, not necessarily, but it could. But as you say, people, there's a wonderful saying, Arthur, which is um, people come to watch when you're on fire. Oh, yeah. And I, I think that's kind of what you're doing. Is like people want to be a part of that. You're lighting these wonderful fires and, and people go, I want to be a part of that. Here's the milk. Here's the marshmallows. Yes. <laughs> Is the lemons. I love that saying, and, and I always say people want to um, follow someone that's on fire, whether to inspire them or just to watch them burn. Nice. Nice. I'll, I'll take it either way, but it's um, – um, but when we did the the lemonade, they donated all the lemons. We got all the sugar donated. The, the tea was the same thing. I mean every time I've done something crazy like this, other people said, let me be a part of this. And even to the point where we had to transport 2,500 pounds of sh- – of, uh, 
of ice mm. to the giant cup. And we got that. We let the crowd be involved. So they were helping us, you know, they formed a big line and they're moving these cubes from the ice truck over to where we were. So they got to actually say, I helped do a Guinness world record. <laughs> Tell me, Arthur, you are very much into having a solid marketing mindset that allows you to do all this stuff. One of your phrases is you got to get off your ask. What do you mean by that? Yes. So um, that I, I think a lot of times we don't have we don't have the resources we don't have the knowledge because we don't ask mm. and so we need to get off our ask and and go ask and sometimes the ask is you know for uh, when you're looking at the Guinness World Records can you help me you know create this giant project can you will you be willing to donate it but we're so, people are so afraid to ask because. Well, what if this person thinks I'm stupid or what if this person doesn't think I can do it or what if, what if, what if? That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to ask. Yeah, I love that. If you don't ask, you don't get. And uh, too many people are afraid. I mean, I, I even find it just with this podcast, people say to me, how do you get all these interviews? And... You ask, you know, you, you ask, just like I asked you. And I spent a day yesterday lining up interviews and I had a five out of five hit rate. Uh, I, you know, I think we under, underestimate the ability to ask. It's, uh, tell me, you, you have, okay, you've got cows falling out of helicopters, you've got giant lemonades and milkshakes, you've got cows rolling up to propose to Chick-fil-A <laughs> fanboys. All this is wonderful, it's funny, what is the commercial outcome for your business? What's it do for business? How can you measure it? Well, I mean, it, it is one of those that um, uh, there was a point when my store was um, was in, in the top twenty percent of the chain. You know, as far as um, as far as sales go, um, it's it's uh, it's made a huge impact on our business. In fact, I you know when I'm driving down to help this um, young man open this new store, and when I came in, there was another owner in there. We we're talking about different marketing stuff, and he goes. You're the marketing guy. Everybody knows you, and uh, and so you know it. It really does make a difference. Yeah, right. So well, it's built your personal brand. You're on the speaking circuit. You do a lot of work with the guys at Thrive, and we had um, Dr. Robert on a few weeks ago, and um, you're making some noise. So great for personal brand. Great for getting your store talked about. And I imagine too, which one of the great problems many small businesses have is attracting and ret- retaining great staff. I'm guessing you would rarely advertise for staff. They'd come to you. Uh, that is true, but there is occasion that we have to. But but when I when I for example when I was using that illustration of taking some balloons to an employee's um, house or to their to their school, um, those are the kinds of things I do on a regular basis. I want my employees to feel special. We can't expect them to run the front of the house or run great customer service if we're not demonstrating that to them in the back. Mm. Yeah, totally. Um, so when I do that, my retention rate at the store is my average employee's been with me for six years, which for a for a fast food restaurant, that's pretty impressive. Very impressive. Goodness me, what would the average be? Twenty percent of that a year? Yeah, that's about right. I and mean, we, I mean, I have people that have been with me for thirteen years. Goodness me, Arthur Greeno fan boys and girls. Hey, who would have thought when you started? <laughs> What's next, Arthur? Um, well, I have a um, I have a new book called Breaking Conformity that comes out on 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 the nineteenth, and um, so my friend and I who wrote the book, our goal is to um, to be one of the top sellers on Amazon for that day, just so we can put it on there that we're a bestseller for the rest of our lives. Well, I'd love to help you with that because that sounds like a, a good a good book, Breaking Conformity. Send me a link when that does go live. Your nineteenth being October twenty fifteen. So. Um, uh, I'd love to help you share that. Last bit of advice for all those small business owners out there listening. Uh, they're all over the world, Arthur. I know they're in the Maldives, they're in Madagascar, they're in Kazakhstan, because I've had emails from all those countries. Um, what's that one bit of advice you tell them? That one thing that you look at and say, I'm not going to do that because I'm worried about people think, go ahead and do it. The worst that can happen is they say no or think you're an idiot. Um, and guess what? They're probably going to think you're an idiot anyway. Love it. Arthur Greeno, Chick-fil-A extraordinaire marketer. Thanks for being part of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thank you. I love a crazy marketer. Don't you? Don't you think there should be more remarkable marketing out there? More crazy stuff? I think all of us have got to think a bit more laterally. I'm going to start that discussion 
inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum immediately following the recording of this episode. Now, I want to share my top three learnings thanks to the very good folk at 99designs.com forward slash Timbo where you'll get a $99 upgrade to your design briefing and netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo where there are some ripper online marketing packages just for you. Learning number one, start being more remarkable. I love that question Arthur poses, what would make me stop? Write that on a sticky note, put it on your forehead. No, no, don't put it on your forehead. You won't be able to see it unless you look in the mirror. Put it on your computer. What would make me stop? Number two, walk towards your dreams and they will come into focus. If you are dreaming of doing some remarkable marketing, of stepping outside of your comfort zone, start walking towards it. Feel uncomfortable. It's probably the right thing to do. Learning number three, in being remarkable, you may well be surprised by how many other business owners want to get involved. So true. I think this podcast is remarkable marketing in a sense, if I do say so myself, and therefore I have sponsors like Net Registry and 99 Designs and Key Person of Influence who want to get involved. And Arthur sees that in spades in developing those Guinness World Records and everything, all the other crazy stuff he does. So don't think it's going to cost you a fortune. Now, um, please hit Arthur up on Twitter. Let him know you heard him, heard him here, at Arthur Greeno. I'm off now to start a remarkable marketing discussion inside the forum. I want to make sure that my forum members are not in that 99.99%. Some wise soul with a sense of humour once said, if plan A doesn't work, there's 25 more letters in the alphabet. Stay cool. Hey, Timbo. This is Dave checking in from MyLaunchKits.com Mission Control. Just wanted to send you a quick transmission to thank you for the Small Business Big Marketing Show. With great guests like Steve Sims and Rand Fishkin, the marketing G-O-L-D just keeps on coming. Well, got to get ready for blast off. Remember to visit MyLaunchKits.com for reliable web hosting and design services. Three, two, one, zero. Dave, you're a rock star. Thank you for that. What a highly, highly produced testimonial too, I've got to say. And listeners, Dave is a great forum member, constantly contributing. If there was a contribution award, maybe there should be, he would be right up there for taking out the gold. Righto, that is almost it for episode 270 of Australia's number one marketing show. Plenty of marketing gold coming your way, though. Next episode... Here we go. Here we go. I get together with our old mate, Andrew Griffiths. Griffo, AG, for another episode of Funny Business. The last one was a little bit morbid, morbid, I know, where we talked about managing through a crisis, a business crisis or a personal crisis. This one promises to be a little bit more upbeat. A few more dad jokes. I'll do my best. Hey, be sure to use Net Registry if you need a website or you need to get your website found. They're good. They'll sort your online footprint right out. And they've got some great listener packages just for you over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. If you need something, anything really designed, car wrap, book cover, brochure, logo, business card, anything, then grab your free $99 design upgrade over at 99designs.com forward slash Timbo. Go on, have a look. Audio production for this show is done by the deliriously clever... Daryl Misson, thanks Daz, and the music bed created by rock god <laughs> Lockie Dolly. If you need a speaker for an upcoming conference, I'm all yours, timreed.com.au. And why don't you just go and surround yourself with some other motivated business owners so you can start actioning some of the ideas that you are hearing on this show. Action creates reaction. There is magic in action. So you can join the forum, is what I'm trying to say, over at crankmymarketing.com. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Always have been, always will be. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.